Mm, great question. Well, the reason I do what I do is because I really get excited in helping clients to uh, discover their why or to move through their stuckness. And uh, what I like to also do is transform that why into their what which then ignites their powerful motivation and leads them into game-changing results. And it is, ah, I just love it. I mean, if, that, if there's anything that keeps me up at night, it's the uh, joy that I experience in working with clients who, are, who know that there's something missing in their life and they really want to make a change and they're ready to step off of the cliff into all the great possibilities that exist for them. So you're a smart business committed to innovation, to service and to modern marketing. And you're asking, what's next? Wondering how you can become even more innovative. My name is Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz and this is the InnovaBuzz podcast where we share all kinds of tips, advice and interview guests on all things innovation and leadership in modern marketing. Hi innovators, it's great to be back. I hope you've had an awesome week so far. I'm really excited to have on the InnovaBuzz podcast as my guest today, Carol Metz-Murray, who's a business empowerment coach helping her clients transform through shifting mindsets and building value alignment. Carol and I had a lot of fun discussing discovering your true why and your values, ensuring that your behavior is aligned with those true values and moving outside your comfort zone to help trigger the shift that can transform you. And we had an interesting discussion around whitewater rafting as a metaphor for triggering that shift outside of your comfort zone but you'll have to listen to the podcast to find out more about that so without further ado then let's fly into the hive and get the buzz from carol metz murray hi i'm your host jürgen strauss from InnovaBiz, and i'm really excited to welcome to the innova buzz podcast today From near Vancouver in Canada, Carol Metz-Murray, who's a business empowerment coach, helping her clients transform through shifting mindsets and building value alignment. She's also Chief Strategist and Engagement Officer at Shift Happens. So welcome to the podcast, Carol. It's a privilege to have you as a guest. Well, thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. You've also written a chapter of the book, Step Into Your Vision, on the subject of listen to your inner voice and also spoken on My Story Monday. So we might talk a little about that. Now, Joe De Silva, who was on episode 125, introduced me to Carol and suggested we interview her on the podcast. So a big hello to Joe. Hi, Joe, and thank you for introducing me. Uh, This is really great. So before we start talking about all things um, mindset and shifting mindset, let's find out a little bit more about you as a person. So as a young child, what did you want to do when you grew up? When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. I uh, really thought that that was my calling. And uh, I I recall as a little little girl doing a lot of uh, practicing on uh, the animals on the farm, the cows and the dogs, <laughs> the cats, and, and um, you know, that's, I think that's where the uh, phrase came from of, have you ever heard of cats? Anyway, um, that's, uh, yeah, I, I truly wanted to be in service to others, and I think that's what was underneath my desire to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. So did you pursue teaching? No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, my life uh, took on a completely um, another path, and um, I, mean, I, I, I would say that in some ways <clears throat> there are teaching op- opportunities when I am coaching, uh, when I am consulting. There's always that opportunity to um, to bring out the teacher in me, mm-hmm. um, or you know when I'm. Um, facilitating 
I'm just not standing in front of a classroom um, seven or eight hours in a day. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get into coaching? Uh, that came about as a uh, life transformation of, uh, and I'm laughing now, is shift happens, embrace it. Um, it was um, a turning point in my life where I um, had, in essence, uh, burnt myself out to a crisp and had to rebuild myself. In that process, lost my dream job and uh, then was also faced with um, where do I go from here? I had a uh, daughter uh, that I was still raising. So I sat back and looked at uh, skill sets that I had and said, I would really like to um, serve people in a different way and stepped into coaching and training as a coach. And I've been doing that ever since. Mm. All right. So, so tell us a little bit then about what you do and why you do it. Mm. Great question. Well, the reason I do what I do is because I really get excited in helping clients to uh, discover their why or to move through their stuckness. And uh, what I like to also do is transform that why into their what, which then ignites their powerful motivation and leads them into game-changing results. And it is, ah, oh, I just love it. I mean, if, that, if there's anything that keeps me up at night, it's the uh, joy that I experience in working with clients who, are, who know that there's something missing in their life and they really want to make a change and they're ready to step off of the cliff into all the great possibilities that exist for them. Mm. Sounds fascinating. Now, um, we talked a little bit before about shift, or you, you explained to us shift happens and, and your company that you're the chief um, marketer for, I think it is, the um, and what does it say? I'm the chief empowerment. I'm the chief empowerment officer. Chief strategist, yeah, yeah and yeah. Yes. So a shift happened. So tell us about that company. Is that something that you founded? Yes, that is my uh, own company, and that company has um, it too has embraced the shift that has happened. Uh, at one time, was mainly a consulting company working uh, with uh, organizations in um, shifting uh, change. And then that uh, I have expanded that company to include not only consulting, but into the um, coaching realm. And as well, I also do speaking. And I, I speak on courage as a result of Shift Happens Embrace It. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, and I, I saw one of your talks, which is which was the um, Monday Monday talk I mentioned earlier. So, um, so how big is Shift Happens the company? How did that happen? How big is it? How many people do you have? Uh, well, actually, at this point, it is me because I am doing <laughs> some shifting. I am. Okay. I am. Uh, actually rebranding re it and um, looking at uh, just some different ways to move it forward. So right now it, uh, it is me. And I just wanted to uh, let you know that this evening I'm back at Mo Mondays um, with another presentation tonight at 7 o'clock. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. well, we'll have to keep an eye on that one. I, I'm guessing they'll post that to YouTube as well. Uh, yes, I will. Mm. All right. So tell us a little bit about the process you go through then. I mean, I like the name Shift Happens and it kind of conjures up the idea of reframing situations in a way that um, you can better deal with them, that they serve you. So tell us a little bit about 
the process that you typically go through? So the process that I use in in Shift Happens is start with a um, value. We I, I analyze their um, their values and do a value alignment, and then from there we move into having a narrative conversation. And really, it's uh, when I say narrative conversation, it is about story. And moving into story, then really it's about really truly listening and being right there with the uh, with the client and hearing what the client is is talking about or not talking about. And often, it's what a client doesn't say is where their answers are. And so I take them through uh, the process of um, discovering their story um, or digging deeper into their story and then finding out um, from them what um, kind of what are the benefits that they get from holding on to that story and then begin to work with them and strategize with them on how they could shift those benefits to uh, arrive at the goal that they have uh, set for themselves. And inevitably, um, it is so fascinating to watch clients because clients have all their own answers. They're, all, they're already there. It's, it's very much like, you know, I can say it's like driving the bus for them or being in the bus right alongside of them or being in the, in, in the boat as uh, they're swimming in the water. Uh, and getting to that place of uh, a client saying, well, that's amazing. How come I didn't think about this before? And yeah. <laughs> it's because they weren't quite ready to think about it uh, mm. yet. So that is is uh, the process in a nutshell. Okay. And, and those transformations must be hugely satisfying, I would imagine. Oh, they yeah. are. They're, they are such a gift. I mean, mm. truly such a gift to... Uh, see somebody, um, their their facial expressions change, their energy change, and it's like you're you're seeing a new person, and they themselves often shock the they're in shock because it's like wow, like I I can have this, this is a possibility, and the answer is yes, it is a possibility. Hmm. Now you talked about um, finding out their values or getting alignment with their values. So how do you go about eliciting someone's values? I do that through, um, actually through a series of questions. And uh, then I also do it with um, a paper, uh, a a written project that I send them home with. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that also comes out of the of that project uh, or of them doing this work is I look for the way that each client is creative and everybody is creative in a different way and I tease that out of them and I ask them to use that when they are looking to find their core values. And it's amazing to see what comes back because I generally do not know which um, form somebody is going to choose. And I can just say one individual came back to me and they had created this huge collage. And that was their way then they told me kind of the story about the values in the collage. It was it was fascinating. But for them, it was an incredibly empowering experience because they'd never done that before, mm. and they didn't realize that their core. Uh, one of the issues that they were facing was that one of their very core values was out of alignment. Mm. Yeah. Or, and- let me rephrase that: how they were living their life currently was yeah. out of alignment with their core one of their core values yeah with the core value that's right and and it's amazing when you highlight that and 
And when you realise that or when people realise that, um, that and address that, that's where the shift really does happen. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, I like the approach of, um, you know, harnessing people's creativity. We've used that in a number of exercises and it does, it is very powerful. Um, and, and I like the idea of letting people choose the way they do it too. Well, and because everybody is unique and different and as you know, you know, what what your creativity is is different from mine and if that's the way that you're going to express yourself, then that's what I want to see. Hmm. Now, you talk about the story. So what do you mean by the story that you work on with them? Everyone has a story or two or three or maybe even ten. And so in working with someone in someone's story, so if they have the issue that they want to resolve by coming to me as their um, empowerment coach, that will have a story around it. And so it's discovering what really is the story, what has, what has the individual created uh, in their own mind to create this story. And it may be, you know, for example, they're wanting to move forward in their career and they're, they're stuck. They don't know why they're not being um, selected, why they're being passed over for promotions. And so they've created a whole story about that from the perspective of, well, it has to be, uh, you know, that... Um, the person doing the interviews doesn't like me, or I don't have enough education, or my education isn't the right, the right um, kind. And, you know, I really like to move forward, but I have all of these family obligations. And so that's what I mean about story. And mm -hmm. they create their own limitations and barriers and that truly is for them to discover that the own, generally the only person holding them back and the only thing holding them back is themselves. <laughs> so it's unraveling that story. So it's kind of the inner voice that is telling them a story to rationalize the situation that they're in. Yes, that is exactly it. And that's where the shifting, shifting of the inner mindset comes in as well. Hmm. So how do you work with somebody on, on their mindset then? You, you've talked about you know, understanding their values alignment and getting them to be creative by presenting that, which probably is, is already a bit of a breakthrough because they, as you suggested, they can see where they might not be living in alignment with the values and then uh, working through the stories. Where, where do the goals come into it or is that what you start with? Um. I start with a, generally with a, what I would refer to as an, an overall goal. Mm. And then as, I'm, as we move through the process of the values um, alignment in, you know, and through the narrative uh, conversation, then once uh, the client is beginning to I'm going to say is see the shift and feel the shift then and and just before we begin the um, strategy sessions we revisit the goals and have a look at that to de to determine whether in fact what was what was true at the beginning is still true now is that the direction that the client wants to go Sometimes it is, and sometimes a, it's a, a client will look at all of that and say, no, with, with what I know now, that's mm. not where I want to go at all. Mm. And they will, in essence, embrace the shift that's happened and decide, well, that's not really what I wanted to do with my life. That's not really how I wanted to build my business. But let's, you know, I want to go off in this direction. and. Mm. When that happens, then we, you know, look, again, look at the values and then we begin to build strategies that will 
uh, help the uh, client move forward. Mm. Yeah, it's a fascinating process. So you basically you're getting shift in terms of understanding values to start with and then maybe some behaviours that are identified as not being in alignment with values and then a shift in how the goals might be perceived in terms of personal priorities as well. So Yes. Hmm. Yes. Definitely. And I would say that it's about nine point five times out of ten that works. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And so how did you um, kind of develop this whole process? Did that come out of personal experience or did you is it kind of based on other techniques? I would say that that is generally personal experience. Mm. That, um, that covers my life journey. Yeah. And in, in all of the shifting that I've done, uh, the, you know, the transformation that I've, uh, the transformations that I've gone through, uh, the, the values uh, alignment piece um, I, I have studied values uh, alignment and realignment. So there is um, a little bit of the, I think it was the idea to do the, the written work, which I have, um, that, that is something that I did when I was studying the values. But the whole thing around bringing in the creativity, that, um, that one is, is mine. And I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm really smiling because at one point in my life, I didn't think I was creative. Mm. Only to discover that we're all creative in very different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a shift that happened for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you tell an interesting story and maybe you could kind of tell a piece of that in the My Story Monday video that, that is online um, because I think that highlights the process that you've been describing to us and how you kind of worked on yourself using that. Yes. Um, do you want me to embellish that story? <laughs> <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever you like. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> And how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, my story um, is in, in a nutshell, and I will go back to, uh, I'll go to the time when uh, shift, shift really began to, uh, to happen um, for me. Uh, prior to that, um, you know, I was... Um, my entrepreneurship started when I was five years old. I grew up on a farm, and you know, by eleven, my parents had, you know, were asking me to be in charge of the family farm as they went away for the weekend. It was a, a mixed farm, um, so there was there was a lot of work. Uh, uh, from there, moved into being asked to. Um, go into an organization to restructure it, and I did not have any training at the time. I was, um, gosh, I was 19 years old, and I just, I went in and did uh, what I needed to do, and in essence, that's where I, uh, um, my passion, truly my passion for service above self um, blossomed. I then went on to work in local government as a um, chief administrative officer, and I worked as a general manager in business, and uh, also worked in a not-for-profits as an executive director. I had the opportunity to go north. Uh, to work in, in the far north as a city manager <clears throat> some years ago, and I took that and um, because I thought it would be a real adventure going in the land of the midnight sun, and it hmm. was. It truly was. While I was there, I had the opportunity to um, 
work on my Master's of Public Administration uh, through the University of Southeast Alaska. And that meant that I traveled from Dawson City to Whitehorse every second weekend. Uh, and sometimes it was every weekend. That's a thousand kilometer uh, road trip. Mm. And you're doing that in winter and summer. And in the, in the far north, the winters uh, were a little cold. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of uh, snow. And uh, when I said to myself, what are you doing? Hmm. It would have been dark as well most of the time, wouldn't it, in the winter? Yes, in the winter time, yes, it was dark. It was dark. And, uh, you know, there were, there were Sunday nights when I was driving back to Dawson City, I would say to myself, what are you doing? You're the only, only person on this long, long highway. Anyway, as a result of all of that, because I had this strong push to... Um, of do 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 and I had left a very violence filled marriage before I'd headed up north I burnt myself out mm. and in that whole process of um, going through that and uh, redefining who I was and who I am that's where the kind of shift process began to emerge and um, one of the things that, um, well, in that whole process of picking up pieces, I also lost my dream job. I, when I um, handed in my or sent my thesis to the University of Southeast Alaska, I opened up the um, local paper and uh, as the universe sometimes provides us with gifts, there was no job advertised. So, yes, I had just completed my thesis uh, for my Master's of Public Administration, and I was uh, without, a, um, without a job. I said before, I had a daughter to uh, still raising a daughter. So, just in looking, you know, then finding the strength to sit down and look at all the different processes that I was going through and the shifting and seeing um, what I needed to shift on the inside to shift my inner game to get me moving in a di different direction. I also discovered that I my values were uh, out of alignment. So that's really where the process began to um, unfold. Mm. And and so how did you go about um, getting back on track, so to speak? Um, did you basically work through this process or did, did the process evolve as you were dealing with the situation? Uh, I would say both. Mm. I worked through the process. I had um, incredible support to work through the process. And one of the, well, what I did in working through the process was, and, and it's who I am, I, um, because I'm also a very curious individual, I would, um, I would and I did uh, work with a variety of different processes and different modalities to discover what worked for me, what didn't work, what truly resonated and moved me forward. And uh, it was also in this process of um, personal development and healing, I um, went to Toastmasters. And that is actually years later where I met Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, Toastmasters was um, such a huge gift because I had been a speaker as a young girl and loved to speak. So this was an opening for me, but it really helped me to rebuild my um, confidence, my self-esteem. And that helped um, as well in moving me forward 
even in the realm of creativity, because if I was going to speak, I needed to be creative in coming up with topics and speeches and mm. um, thinking on my feet. And so it, it helped me um, a lot to move forward. But every one of the, kind of the processes that I went through, there was a piece that I was able to say, hmm, you know, when I, when I looked back at it all, was, hmm, I think this could help someone else. And how, how would it look if I put it together like this? And in essence, it's come together. Hmm. Mm, that's great. Yeah, Toastmasters is great, isn't it? Yes, um, it is. It does, certainly does challenge your creativity with the different um, speech topics that they come up with that you progress through on your journey there and and also they get you up on your feet thinking on your feet when they do what's called table topics uh, correct and i one of the other huge benefits out of uh toastmasters is that you get evaluations from individuals and so you can have 20 different people give you feedback hmm. from 20 different perspectives um you learn a lot about yourself, and uh, that helps you to move forward. Mm. All right. Now, um, one of the things you mentioned in the process is getting to the heart of um, people's motivation, really understanding what motivates them. So tell us a little bit how that works, because I wasn't quite sure where that fits in, whether you'd, that comes out of the story or whether that's at the value stage. Uh, getting to the to the heart of the matter, really, uh, it starts to be uncovered at the um, at the value stage. Mm. However, it takes a while for different individuals uh, to to really um, uncover it and own it. And so when I talk about getting to the heart of the matter it's um, really and truly from my perspective the any work we do whether we're uh, an engineer or whether we're a speaker or we could be um, an, a technician if you know it's it's operating from the heart, which is accompanied by your head and the thinking and analyzing, and also by your intuition. But it's really is, from my perspective, as we move through the coaching process, the heart, the client's heart actually does open up. And how that happens is by the client accepting who they are and doing their own shifting of their mindset to accept what is possible and to listen, to truly listen to their intuition. And we all have intuition. Mm. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? And I think, you know, getting really clear on your why is so important because that sustains you when things are not going as well as perhaps you'd like. And, and also it really propels you towards those goals. That's right. Mm. Yeah, that is so true. Uh, and without, without having clarity on that, many people go through life um, just living. They're not truly living their life by design. Actually, life is living them. Mm. It's happening to them. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's mm. happening yeah. Um, all right. Now, you also talked about um, translating the why to the what. So do you help people come up then with strategies to achieve goals? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. And uh, in, in helping to uh, define strategies for individuals, um, some, you know, with individuals who are not clear about what their goals are, it's taking a, first and foremost, of taking a step back to, um, 
have a look at some, at where their life is at. Now, for example, in working with a client who wants to be promoted, they want to move into a manager's job or they want to move into an executive job and that's where their heart is set. However, they've been passed over. Uh, somebody else has gotten the position. So then they, they sit back and they say, well, what happened? And we have a look at that. But as well, when we're looking at that, it, we also look at things like, so what did you, what do you believe are the risks that go, uh, are associated with moving into an executive position? How will that impact your life? And as well, sometimes it's depending on what comes out of the uh, session, there will also be a time of looking at, so what's the benefit that you are getting from presenting yourself at an interview where you're now telling me you could have done much better and you, you know, in the interview, but here you are. So having them also to look at, at that and that whole process really does more shifting because it opens up more um, ex exploration of the their inner game or their own mindset. Mm -hmm. And once that is, once they have, um, once they have done that, then they will, uh, they will already see that the the shifting has created openings for uh, a different different sets of goals. Then we will move into strategizing what those goals would be. Where do they Where do they want to be? How will that impact? A family, you know, what uh, truly is, you know, how will they put their what into action? Mm. Yeah, that's that's a really neat process. I like that. From the point of view of um, the stories that people tell themselves, in, in the example you gave, you know, it could well be that there is a values misalignment there in the goal that the person is going for. In, for example, um a more senior position that would demand more time away from the family and, and family being a real high value, then that, that could be one reason why the performance at interview wasn't quite as good as perhaps the person is capable of. That's right. That's right. And they haven't, uh, until that point in time, not given it any uh, any thought, any consideration and then the interview doesn't go the way that um, that they, on the surface, they were hoping. Mm. Yet, when they stand back and have a look at everything, they realize that that really wasn't where they um, wanted to be, or that there was something holding them back, and they realize that because you know, values were out of alignment or that they had a doubt about themselves, in essence, they'd blown the interview. So now knowing yeah. that and building up their own confidence, they can then decide whether they want to, um, you know, want to search out another executive position. Yeah, that's right. Or whether whether it's the goal that's actually in misalignment with values. Hmm. All right. Well, this is fascinating, Carol. Um, I could go on and dig deeper in all of these things, but I respect your time, and I think it's time we moved on to the buzz, which is our innovation round, and it's designed to help our audience, who are mainly innovators and leaders in their field, with some tips from your experience. So I've got five questions that I'm going to ask. Hopefully, you'll give us some really insightful answers that will inspire everyone to go away and do something awesome today. So what's the number one thing you think anyone needs to do to be more innovative? You just mentioned it. 
is to go and have some fun. Do something, <laughs> do something that totally, totally cleans your mind. Just get a blank slate and then allow the, you know, that allows creativity to, to, to come in and ideas that you wouldn't have thought of before surface. So that's the very first thing that, you, that a person needs to do. Mm, that's great advice. And, and I like to go for a, a bike ride every morning and often when I'm on my own in particular and I'm not talking to other people, um, that kind of is the time I get a lot of ideas and it's, it's very much along those lines that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. All right, what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Well, mine, uh, the one that comes to mind was me uh, accepting a challenge to go on a two-week uh, river, uh, whitewater river rafting um, adventure. Mm. And the prerequisite was that <clears throat> you would never, ever have been in a canoe before. Okay. So I took that on and let me tell you there wasn't any um, during that two weeks uh, the focus was on keeping the canoe upright and not full of water making it through whitewater rapids and living with the bears and coming home and being very okay but during that period of time uh, I mean it just my world was completely different, uh, and this was <clears throat> labeled as a leadership um, adventure. And when I came home and looked at uh, the work that I was doing, it was amazing from um, an innovation perspective and even a system perspective. It was uh, standing back and saying, okay, we need to have a look at what we're doing, how, you know, what systems do we have in place, how can we simplify it, what makes it, uh, what will give the same customer service, but in, in less time. And for me, what was really outstanding was that the team that I was leading at the time were right on board, and away they went, and I did the, in essence, I guess, the coaching and the management of the work that they were doing, but they came up with some great, great ideas and implemented them. So for me, it was, in essence, getting out of my own way and allowing or, or creating the space for uh, other people around me to come forward with their ideas as well. Mm. So the whitewater rafting adventure that took you completely out of your comfort zone so was your team involved in that as well no oh, okay no i went with a uh what were there i think there was 14 it was 14 women and none of us had canoed mm. none of us had yes and um yeah, it was it was an uh, adventure all of its own, and we in in that period of time, we uh, had to develop our team. Just given our surroundings, our circumstances, that in itself was um, we had you know we were we were put to the to the task of being innovative in. Uh, certainly a lot of personal development, but in, in some cases developing strategies on how we were going to get uh, canoes from uh, one side of the White Rapids to the other. Uh, yeah, it's, it, that was, was quite the experience. Mm -hmm. And obviously a metaphor for taking ideas and strategies back into the workplace. Yes. All right, what's your favorite tool or system for improving your own productivity and allowing you to be more innovative? Hmm. My favorite tool is meditation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, whether uh, some certainly meditation at home. But there's um, I've just learned some tips and tricks to actually do very short meditations when I'm at work and no one even knows that I'm doing them. That helps me to to rejuvenate and it just it helps me to clear the clutter out of my mind uh, to bring forward um, you know thoughts or just uh, um, you know a word will come flying through through my mind that ah that's it hmm. and yeah and so you know I'll share one with you which is um, I for me I find it fascinating if things are stressful um, I you know if I'm with a group of people and I need to shift I will start yawning and it's amazing what that does for me and during that whole process, I'll clear my mind and there will be a, a mini meditation. But what is also really great is nine times out of ten, other people will also start yawning. And it breaks, <laughs> <laughs> it breaks the kind of the um, chain of what's been happening and people come back uh, refreshed and they have no idea what actually did the refreshing. Yeah. Okay, so there's a little mini meditation tip for everyone. Um, yes. I'll have to try that out. All right, what's the best way to keep a client on track? Um, the, uh, for me, the, um, the best way in, in, for accountability is... Um, Being firm but fair, and one of my favorite questions in, that I meet with a client is if they have promised to do something and they didn't, I will basically ask them what had them not keeping that promise. And um, that really seems to uh, work for me. I, uh, With the clients that I work with, we have a... Um, trusting relationship and clients also know that they can contact me between sessions between coaching sessions and um, I'm I'm there for them generally I find that if clients know that the, and clients are dedicated to moving themselves forward those things will um, keep them on track mm. if Sometimes it happens when, you know, it's a client isn't staying on track. Then it comes time for a, uh, a very honest conversation about what's going on for them. Mm. And probably it's exploring again, you know, their why and their values and so on. Because yeah. there, be, <laughs> there may be some more self-sabotage going on. That's right, and it could very well be that there's another shift coming. Hmm. All right, and what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? You ask a very, very good question. <laughs> and, uh, because, now, one of the things that I find in today's world where... Um, there are so many cookie cutters and people step into them. And, and I know from my own personal experience, when it comes to differentiating yourself, the biggest thing for me is being, being authentic. And, and you're going to say to me, well, how, how does anybody know? The point of, the point of it is, People do know, and it's a matter of in differentiating yourself is really walking your walk and talking your talk and standing in that power, staying with the shift. For me, that is what differentiates me. I, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not glitz and glamour. 
I am me and I truly, truly um, hold that space for my clients. And so I know other people do as well, but that is, uh, that is who I am. And one of the things that I have recently, um, a process I've gone through as I uh, reframe and rebrand me is looking at what um, I want clients to have when they work with me and what do I want clients to know me for. And in my time of creativity, what came up for me was beyond exceptional. So that's what differentiates me by giving service that is beyond exceptional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that, beyond exceptional. Great. All right. Well, thanks for getting us through the buzz then, Carol. So you talked a little bit about uh, rebranding your business. What What's the future for you and for your business? Uh, the future at this point is um, looking at, um, as I continue to coach and move into um, more one-on-one -on -one coaching, but also looking at um, doing more leadership coaching, doing it in, from the perspective of uh, group coaching. And one of the one of my goals on the horizon is to create a, a, a retreat center where coaching will be done in uh, a retreat fashion. And that, um, that one really excites me mm -hmm. because it, um, it provides an, an opportunity to be outdoors. And so you're going to take, you're going to take other people whitewater rafting. That's right. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you got that one right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because that would be a lot of fun and a lot mm. of adventure and a lot of growth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds like fun. I'll have to keep an eye on that because oh, I've never been whitewater rafting, so I might have to try that out. <laughs> oh, okay. So what's the... Uh, Number one piece of advice then you'd give to any business owner that wants to be a leader in their field and a leader in innovation? First and foremost, uh, truly is to have a look at your, your mindset not, and, and um, set aside the fear. Have courage to look at who you are and where you want to go and shift if you if you have to and in that whole process uh, to be innovative is to number well as I mentioned earlier is yes to have fun but it's beyond that it's to see the opportunities where um, where others uh, don't see them and whether that's in something like um, uh, IT and all the different inventions that are happening so quickly uh, or in the world of even something like personal development is be innovative and step forward. Don't hold yourself back. And go for it and truly live that life that you were meant to be. So it's tapping into the, the innovative streak that's inside you. Uh, first and foremost. Mm. Yeah, and like you said at the beginning, everybody everybody is creative in some way or other. So, yes. yeah, I really like that. Look, at, uh, see the opportunities where others don't and, and have courage and, you know, despite the fear, still go ahead and do what you think is, is going to give you that innovation, like whitewater rafting, which is a great metaphor. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, thank you, Carol. This has been really great. I've enjoyed this. You've given us a really insightful overview of your process and how kind of working from um, values and limiting beliefs and stories through to goals and realignment can make shift happen. 
So where can people reach out and say thank you for what you've shared today? They can reach out on LinkedIn and uh, they can find me at uh, linkedin.com slash uh, forward slash pub forward slash carol uh, dash Metz dash Murray uh, or they can find me on Twitter at um, C underscore Metz M-E-T-Z Facebook they can find me at uh, Biz Empowerment and on Skype I'm Carol.Metz8 all right, and we'll have uh, links to all of those places in the show notes for the episode so people can directly um, click through and get in touch. So finally, who would you like me to interview on a future Nova Buzz podcast and why? I thought about that earlier today, and I would, um, I'm going to suggest uh, C.L. Ellis with the Ellis Institute and the reason that I'm going to suggest C.L. is because she is um, a goldsmith but not only is she a goldsmith she's also a business owner she's a coach and she's moving into uh, speaking and I think her story is fascinating if you like, I can connect you with her. Absolutely. I'd love that. Thanks, Carol. And CL, if you listen to this, look out for an invitation from us to the Innova Buzz podcast, courtesy of Carol Metz Murray. So thanks so much for sharing your time and your insights with us today on the Innova Buzz podcast, Carol. Um, this has been fascinating. As I said, uh, you've given us a really in depth outline of how you go about making are helping clients to make the shift really or empowering them to make the shift or having them empowered to make their own shift. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I hopefully th the audience will also enjoy it and learn a lot out of it. So I wish you all the best for the future and for the changes and shifts that are coming up for you and let's keep in touch. Well, thank you. Let's keep in touch. And I so appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with you and to reach out to the uh, worldwide community and hopefully I've uh, inspired somebody to uh, let shift happen and embrace it. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. That was a comprehensive and educational outline of how our values and the stories we tell ourselves can lead to building barriers for ourselves to achieving our goals and how we can shift the barriers out of our way. All the ideas and tips that Carol shared with us can be found at innovabiz.co forward slash Carol Metz Murray. That is C-A-R-O-L-M-E-T-Z-M-U-R-R-A-Y. All lowercase, all one word, in overbiz.co forward slash Carol Metz Murray. You'll find contact information for getting in touch with Carol there as well. Carol suggested I interview CL Ellis of the Ellis Institute on a future Innova Buzz podcast. So CL, keep an eye on your inbox for an invitation from us to the Innova Buzz podcast, courtesy of Carol Metz Murray. Stay connected. Head on over to iTunes or Stitcher or Pocket Casts and subscribe to the Innova Buzz podcast so you make sure you'll never miss another episode. We'd also love you to leave us a review because what you think matters. Take some of the ideas you've heard today and apply them in your business. Any thoughts, ideas, suggestions or questions, share them in the comments below the blog post. And remember... If you want to get better marketing results than you ever have, join our fantastic LinkedIn community at the Transformational Marketing Academy. All you have to do is go to innovabiz.co forward slash TMAC. It's free to join. Hope to see you there soon. Until next time, I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz. Remember to be awesome and keep innovating. <laughs>